So Madame Alexander was a young woman trying to start a company. And guess what else was going on? The Great Depression. Here is a person trying to start a company with really no capital, a woman in those days having her own company, come on. And then the Depression came along. And what to do, how to save the company? Well, one of the things you could have done is you could have, maybe you would have been lucky enough to have the license for Shirley Temple, but guess what? Ideal Doll Company had that. And those people who had money to buy a doll for their children those days, they bought a Shirley Temple doll. Madame Alexander tried to a variety of ways to overcome it, but not until Rodney Waller wrote a great article about this uh, that appears in the auction catalog, and it's called The Dion Quintuplets and How They Saved the Day, because they did save the day for Madame Alexander. She obtained a license with uh, the Canadian government, who had taken over um, control of the, of the quintuplets. Think about this. They were the first recorded five girl quintuplets identical ever born, and they were so famous. They, everyone watched them. They wanted to know everything about them. The government did <laughs> amazing things that seem horrible in retrospect, um, that they set up viewing platforms that were with glass, the children would go in their glass playground and play, and people could stand back and could watch them at their play, at what they did, and they were so beloved and so I idolized, and madam, got a license to recreate dolls in the image of the Dion Quintuplets, and that is what made and saved her company. The Dion Quintuplet dolls were so popular that at some point they became the, the most sold dolls that the company ever had done in a particular category. They were made of composition, and here's how she did. Now remember, they're identical children. So what can you do? You can't make a doll with a different facial model or a different hairstyle or anything. They're identical. So she very quickly um, came upon the idea, well, I'll make them in variations of costumes. So she did her pastel costumes or uh, other variations so that each one could be distinguished. And she wanted, and she would do advertising campaigns, choose your favorite. So she would encourage children whose parents couldn't afford to buy an entire set of Dion Quintuplet dolls to just buy one. And did everything she could to increase their marketability. She did wigged or painted hair. She did painted eyes. She did sleep eyes. She did multiple variations of costumes. And then she did a whole variety of incredible presentations of the dolls that would increase their marketability. Just as an aside, and a little bit later, as the dolls got really, really popular, she started having different marketing strategies where department stores were clamoring for the dolls because they had such demand for them, and she required them to take a package of some of her other dolls that weren't as well-selling as those two. So that was, th these are all stories that are the background of the Down Quintuplets, how they saved the Alexander Company, but also tell you a little bit about the marketing strategy that she did. So I wanted to show you some of the variations that are in this collection. First of all, she contracted with a furniture company and had so many different furniture pieces made. This rare rocker is one of the few examples that, that is known of the swan swing, it's, as it's called, with the swan edge side. Very, very few, if any other examples at all, are known. A popular one, and when you can find it in very, very vivid colors like this, is the carousel. And I'm, the top removed, and maybe you can see it a little bit better if the top is removed, but every one of the children had their name imprinted on the side, like a decoupage, and there was a different animal for each child. So we have the dog, I'm going to lift it so it won't make noise. We have the dog, we have the duck, we have the squirrel, and we have the rabbit. And they, each one of the children that's sitting there is wearing a matching pastel costume with little rickrack trim and has her little beaded necklace with her name on it. Now notice the difference with the costumes in this set, for example. These are the little PK romper suits, and they all have them in a different pastel color with the little um, beaded brooch pin with their necklace. Made in this style, we have a different kind of romper suit, and this is a very, very rare seesaw, which is, let me tell you, is 
must have been tricky for them sitting on it because it's tricky for us to display it. But it's a very, very rare piece. And again, designed for each of the children to sit appropriately. When the children were born, very, very quickly, um, well, the nurse, Yvonne LaRue, was present for the first birth of the first two children, and then the doctor came in after that. And he kind of got most of the publicity as time went on. But Madame Alexander made the doll, Dr. Defoe. He had the name of Dr. Defoe. That's what he was marketed as, which was his actual name. She was simply nurse. But later on, in about 1937, uh, Madame realized that the nurse was a really good promotional person talking about the birth of the children, and she really took care of them during their early infancy years. So she sent nurse out on a publicity uh, tour around the country and went into department stores and would talk about the, the children, and uh, subsequently people would buy the dolls. So collectors of, of the Dion quintuplets are also always looking for the Dr. Defoe and the nurse, and these are their original costumes. And then I'm going to move this so I can show you a few more of the dolls that we have behind the back here. First of all, over on this side, as you can see, the doll is in its original box, which is a department store box. And very often, department stores could commission dolls in their own particular costumes they wanted, or could say, we're going to offer them in our particular gift box. And this is an example of how a child could buy one of the quintuplets. This example, having the wig and having the sleep eyes in her original tag costume. One of the more popular presentation of the quints would be to present them in a wicker hamper. And there are two examples shown here. And again, they're wearing, these were the most popular, the little piquet romper suits. And they're wearing them here each one of them with their little brass name tag on them. And then they're presented in their wicker tray. And on the back of the tray is another complete set of costumes that they could be wearing, little pinafore dresses with little matching bonnets. One of the most luxurious sets I've ever seen is this large set. The, la the large size is very rare in itself. But this example have most beautiful uh, silk dresses and very, de again, the very delicate pastel colors, staying with that, um, but variations, a different color for each doll in their name pins. The Canadian government eventually, Madame was the one who introduced the idea of having uh, different colored dresses for each doll to identify them, and the Canadian government kind of took that over later on. And when the children were on display, they would always be wearing a different colored costume, although it was different than the ones she had shown. Another example of the type of furniture uh, that was made for the dolls was the little scooter. In this example, um, again, you can see their names on the front of each one of them. I thought these were a really interesting set because A, they're wigged, so you see that variation. They're toddlers, they're not baby bodies, but they're straight leg toddler bodies. And these cute little hats, like little tams, are just so precious. Very, very different kind of costume. And again, in all five different colors. And then another variation of a wicker basket with the painted hair toddlers, toddlers, and wearing the little organdy dresses, and then having the printed romper suits uh, pinned to the back. So there were so many choices you could have. And having that variety of options available um, to parents for their children to buy, of course, made it all the more in demand and really saved the day for Madame Alexander. They became so much popular. They allowed her to build and develop her company so that later on she could move into um, doing what she really wanted to do was to become a fashion girl. She wanted to introduce dolls in fabulous fashions. These were the beginning of it and having their celebrity status gave her the capital that allowed her company to develop. 